Today we're looking at one of my favourite lines of watches, the Rolex Submariner, or more commonly known, the No Date Submariner. It's one of the most iconic watches ever, but it's changed massively over the past few decades. And that makes buying one kind of tricky. Do you go with characterful vintage, or do you go with beastly modern? Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I am Adrian, and I've been wanting to do this video for such a long time. The Rolex Submariner is one of those watch lines that I've just spent so long researching for my own benefit. And I've, I've bought Submariners, and when I buy a watch, I really read up about this stuff, and I learn as much as I possibly can before pulling the trigger. And I guess doing that research really helps me to make the right decision. Let's start off at the beginning. Let's start off with a bit of history about the Submariner. So the Submariner was launched in 1954 with the reference 6204, completely stealing the thunder from the Turnograph, which was actually launched a year previous, in 1953. Rolex was working on developing the Submariner at the same time as launching the Turnograph. And as you can see, they are pretty much identical. So maybe Rolex were just testing the market by launching the Turnograph. From 1954, I'm actually gonna jump a few decades to the 80s for two reasons. One, I only like to talk about watches that I've actually experienced myself. And two, Houdinki have done an amazing video called one of their reference points, I think it was, where they go through detail on the very rare and very interesting references that are between 1954 and the 80s. They actually stop at the 5513 in the 80s and that's where I want to carry on and that's what I have experience with. So the watches that I'm going to show you today are the 5513 from the 80s, the 14060 from the 90s, the 14060M from the 2000s and then the double 14060, the most recent version of the Submariner. Before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Bark and Jack. We've just launched some new Shell Cordovan straps made by JPM over in Florence. We have regular and long sizes now. Jump over to barkandjack.shop and check them out. So the first watch that we're going to look at is the 5513. This was launched in 1962 and was the original Bond watch. Many think that the success of the Submariner range was based on the fact that this was a Bond watch and that it had that marketing hype. And it shows that even in the 60s that Rolex were the kings of marketing. Actually, since day one, Rolex have been on it with their marketing. Let's get into some of the details. So the 5513 ran from 1962 all the way to 1989, an incredible stretch. It has a 40 millimeter wide case, 200 meters of water resistance, and it has an automatic movement, the caliber 1520. It is not COSC certified. The glass is acrylic and we have an aluminium bezel insert. The bezel is a bi-directional friction bezel. It also has tritium loom. Now over time, naturally with, with a lifespan of that long, there, there have been so many variations of the 5513. So it is a beast. It's, it's a study all on its own to understand the 5513. And if you're gonna go down that route, then you really have to learn what you're buying. The 513 that you've been looking at isn't actually mine. This is fishes that's been kindly shared by Watchvice. The one that I had was from 1985 and it had a gloss dial. So the original 5513 had matte dial with no white gold surrounds on the loom markers. It was just a matte dial with a big fat tritium blobs for the hour markers. When it comes to owning a watch like this, things that I think you should note are the acrylic glass. Acrylic scratches really very easily. All the light scratches are equally easy to get out, but the watch can look quite scruffy really very quickly. Now you don't buy a vintage watch for it to be perfect. As you can see with this, the bezel is rounded down around the edges. It's, 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 it's worn, <laughs> it's been worn and loved. And that's half the reason why I personally buy vintage is that I like to feel the character in the watches. But I'm also clumsy as hell. And so I, I kept bashing this acrylic glass on everything and it actually protrudes by quite a long way. And so when you're owning a watch and thinking about wearing it and maybe if this is gonna be everyday watch, then that's really something you have to be aware of. Also the bezel, I actually use my bezels. I, I, I used to use my bezel, but I used to be a, a corporate trainer. I used to present and, and, and do training sessions. And I'd actually use the bezel to time certain sections of my presentation. I could just glance down and see how long I've got between each part. Now, if you've got a bi-directional friction bezel, what that means is that there's it's just a friction holding the bezel in place. So you can very easily knock that bezel and turn it round. There's no locking it, there's no ratchet, there's no click stopping it from turning in one direction. 
And so this thing can just freely spin in any direction. And it's, uh, for, for me, that was just a, a wasted bezel. It just became a, a fidget spinner, if anything. And then you've got the bracelet. The bracelet is really very light. It feels quite weak and flimsy. And unfortunately, it doesn't get any better for another couple of decades. Now, I know some of you are gonna get grumpy with me and probably shouting at your phone with my comments about it being flimsy and weak, not good for everyday use when it's a tool watch. It was a dive watch. Military units used this watch. It was a bond watch. But all of that stuff's just relative. Strength and durability are all relative. And so if you were to compare the 5513 to the modern day Submariner, if I was to suggest what is better for everyday use, it's a modern Submariner. Sapphire crystal, solid bracelet, that thing can take a beating. Comparatively, the 5513 does feel quite weak. Gorgeous looking thing, don't get me wrong, absolutely gorgeous, but for me, for someone who's clumsy and uh, wants to use their watches for things, I just didn't feel comfortable doing that with the 5513. Let's jump onto the next one, the 14060. This took over from the 5513 in 1989 and went through to 1999. We have the same 40 millimeter wide case. It now has 300 meters of water resistance. It still has an automatic movement inside. It is now the caliber 3000, still not COSC certified. We do now, however, have sapphire crystal, still an aluminum bezel insert, but this is now a unidirectional bezel, and so it clicks, it only goes one way. We still have the hollow end link bracelet. We do still have tritium loom, but we now have the white gold surrounds around the loom. The 14060 is an incredible looking watch. Not quite as amazing as the 5513, but you still have that air of vintage to it. If you get the right one with a tritium dial, then the tritium will unfortunately be dead and so you won't get the loom glowing, but you will get nice patina with that tritium dial. If you see a 14060 with a dial that down at six o'clock, it says Swiss made, that actually means it has a service dial and therefore it has super luminova as a loom. But if it is, you have the loom will work, uh, but the downside is people gravitate away from watches with service dials. The Caliber 3000 movement that's in this is an upgrade from the 1520, more robust, more accurate movement, but it isn't as robust or accurate as the modern day movements. So it's kind of a middle point. As a summary of this watch, I don't really have a bad thing to say about it. The bracelet isn't great, but nor was the 5513 and nor is the next bracelet. The loom, there are benefits to having tritium loom. I've got a watch with tritium in it. It's patinaed and it looks cool. It gives a nice vintage air. And so you have that nice mix of vintage look. You've got the slim down case. You've got the vintage look on the dial, but then you have the benefits of sapphire crystal. So it's, it's a nice mixture of vintage and modern that's going on. So the next one is the 14060M, and this is where it's gonna to start to get a little bit more tricky. So the M, some people think it means modified, some people think it means movement. Basically, the watch is very, very similar to the 14060, it just has a different movement inside and different loom. The 14060M was introduced in 1999, and it went on until 2009. We have a 40 millimeter wide case, Still the 300 meters of water resistance, still an automatic movement. We now have the caliber 3130. This movement in the 14060M is COSC certified. We have the same sapphire crystal, we have the same aluminum bezel inset, we have the same unidirectional bezel, and we have the same lightweight hollow end links bracelet. We do, however, now have super luminova in the dial. Down at six o'clock, all of these dials will say Swiss made. So in general, the 14060M is the same as the 14060, just with a new movement and just with slightly different loom. There are two versions, however. You've got the two-line version and the four-line version. The four-line version states that the movement is COSC certified. However, all of the 14060Ms are COSC certified. I feel the 14060M range, the, the two-line and the four-line, have, they kind of got this really cool mix about them. The two line gives this really nice air of vintage about it because it has a two line which is reminiscent of the 5513 era. And so it has this vintage air, but at the same time of having a very robust movement inside and having the sapphire crystal. So it's really a, a very, very capable watch, but with this vintage style about it. Whereas you've got the four line version and it gives a completely different air. It has a very, very modern air about it, especially with the engraving around the side. I feel like the four line version, if I didn't have any Submariners and wanted to get one, the four line 14060M is the one that I'd go for. I think it is perfect. It has a slimmer case. It has all the extra touches that make it feel a little bit special and it has a brilliant movement inside. This watch is superb. 
Before I go any further and talk about the 114060, the current version of the Submariner, I want to say a massive thank you to Kai over at Watchvice. I planned to do this video with a watch dealer so I could capture uh, original content of these watches rather than just showing screenshots or photographs of watches. I wanted to be able to show you video of this stuff. Now, because of the current situation, I'm not able to go out and capture that content. Not only did Kai share his footage with me, but he went off and spent time and created new footage of this 5513 for me, which is incredibly generous. So please jump over to Kai's channel, watch Vice. It's a German channel. If you understand German, jump over to Kai's channel. If you don't understand German, then they actually have a secondary channel called Jenny. And Jenny is Kai's wife and she does an English version of the channel. Links will be in the description down below. So the 114060 is a current day Submariner. This is the one that you'd pick up in the shops right now, if you could. This is the one that you'd join the waitlist for. This is a ceramic Submariner. It was introduced in 2009 and is still present. We still have a 40 millimeter wide case, still have an automatic movement. It's still the 3130 and it is still COSC certified. Sapphire crystal, but now we have, the difference is a bezel. We have a ceramic unidirectional bezel. The bracelet has had a long awaited update. We now have a solid bracelet and the loom is now chromolite. On paper, the 114060 doesn't sound all that different from the 14060M. Same movement, same case size, but actually the 40 millimeters on this version of the watch is very different from the 40 millimeters on the previous version. The 40 millimeters on the previous Submariners was actually the size of the bezel, not the size of the case. The case was more like 39. Whereas this watch, the case is 40 millimeters wide. It's more boxy, the lugs are massive. So this case is a maxi case. It is a large, chunky, wide case. We also have large, chunky, wide dial and hands. The dial and hands are both maxi as well. If you look at the hour markers on the dial, they are huge and the hands are much fatter. And then the other difference is obviously the ceramic bezel. The ceramic bezel is incredibly shiny. It's very, very hard wearing and Rolex say that it's not going to scratch or fade, but there are massive pros and cons with these bezels. So with the aluminum, they're very, very cheap to replace. I think they're about 20, 30 quid to replace. They scratch quite easily, they can dent quite easily, but if you drop it, nothing's gonna happen. Whereas the ceramic bezel, incredibly hard. It's probably never gonna fade in color, but if you drop it, it could shatter. And so, and, and also it's incredibly expensive to replace. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts with these things. The big thing that stands out for me on this watch is the bracelet. The bracelet is incredibly comfy. It's beast-like in its build construction and it just, it feels great because it's got the weight behind it. Such a brilliant bracelet, especially in comparison to the, the previous. I guess my biggest criticism about this watch is its overall character or lack of character. I feel there is no character in this watch. I feel it is a very clinical watch and the ceramic bezel kind of really hits that feeling home with the fact that it, the ceramic bezel should stay perfect. It should always, it shouldn't age, it shouldn't scratch, it should always look pristine. So this watch as a whole is pretty much always gonna look pristine and therefore it's just gonna lack in character. And I just feel it's, uh, I don't know, I just feel that no romance from this style of watch at all. I can't see beyond the luxury of the current Submariner. This Submariner that I have, it's my everyday watch and I, I wear it through everything. And I just enjoy it. It's scratched, it's, it's, it is battered. And that's how I want it. I want a watch that I can wear and enjoy. Whereas I just, I can't imagine me having that connection with the current version of the Submariner. Of course, this is just my personal opinion on these things. And I'm not trying to sway you in any way. I'm just trying to share my experiences with how I felt interacting with these watches. I do love the new Submariner. I'd, I've been very critical about it in the past. And I can't, I can't ignore how well made this machine is. So if I was to wrap up and kind of summarize all of these watches from my own kind of personal viewpoint, the 5513 is gorgeous as hell. It's the sexiest Submariner. And there are so many variants so you can get creative of what they are. Problem is that they are incredibly expensive if you're gonna get one. If it's gonna be part of collection, then fill your boots. I think it'd be a gorgeous part to pretty much any collection. But as an everyday watch for me, I don't think it suits. The 14060, a brilliant kind of combination between vintage and modern. You've got the vintage tritium dial, we've got the vintage smaller slimline case, but then you also have the new sapphire crystal 
and you have the, the slightly better movement, the Calibre 3000. The 14060M is even more so of a combination between that vintage and modern, perhaps more on the modern side than the vintage side, but you still have the slimline case. If you get the two line dial, then you have that vintage looking dial, but then you have the benefits of the newer movement, the Calibre 3130 and the Super Luminova Loom. So the Loom is actually going to work. And then you have the double 14060. It's a beast. It's an incredibly well-made beast. Just for me, it lacks character. It's a bit too clinical, but technically it's the best Submariner yet. That sounds like an Apple launch, doesn't it? Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you've got any questions about these Submariners, then drop a question down below and either me or someone in the community will get back to you. Again, a massive thanks to Kai and the watch community for chipping in with their footage. I'll have links down in the description below to Kai and Jenny's channel, so please go check them out. And that Houdinki video, the um, reference points around Samaritan, it's the really old stuff, the, the crazy rare stuff. It's really interesting, go check that out. If you like this video, then hit that thumbs up button. And if you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down the bottom there and the little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you've got a watch mate you think might find this video useful, then do share it with them. If you wanna check out the watch straps and accessories that we have, Jump over to barkandjack.shop and check those out. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.